This looks good. Self praising is the best kind of praising. Let's do this, shall we? Hey guys, Harsh here and welcome back to Technoloop. This is the iPhone 6s in 2020. Call me a liar. Trying not to let my feelings get to me. Sometimes I can't let them go. So now I got these hopes. Now I got these hopes in my head. So yeah, this is the iPhone 6s in 2020. And the question that comes in is that, is it still worth it? Should you buy an iPhone 6s? Now, first off, you might ask, why are we even having this conversation? And that is because iPhones age really well. And a prime example of that is the iPhone 6s. This phone was launched in September 2015 and it still runs the latest iOS version. Yes, Apple has supported this phone for more than four and a half years, which is bonkers. The iPhone 6s runs the latest iOS 13.4 and that is a great example of what Apple is good at. Apple is very good at giving support for their phones and that's why the value of iPhones after you buy them is still intact. So after sales value of iPhones is way better than any Android phone out there and that is excellent. I guess Apple is the only manufacturer out there which supports their phone for more than 4 years. Like it's bonkers. OnePlus comes close like they give support for at least 3 years but this is next level. And that's why we are having this conversation. Should you buy an iPhone 6s in 2020? Because it still runs the latest iOS version. Well, the answer to that is a little bit complicated and let me break it down for you. So first up, let's start by talking about the hardware present on iPhone 6s. Now do remember that this hardware is four and a half years old and by 2020 standards, that's pretty outdated. But anyway, let's talk about that. Let's start with the display. So the iPhone 6s comes with a 4.7 inch display with a resolution of 1334 by 750 pixels. Now this display is an IPS LCD panel and it is just over 720p. Now I thought that I would straight up hate the display but that is not the case. The display is actually very good when it comes to color accuracy and also in terms of the viewing angles. I did not notice a huge difference going from an iPhone 11 to an iPhone 6s. Now, I know that iPhone 11 does not have the best display out there, even that is very subpar when it comes to pure resolution. But still, by 2020 standards, I don't think that the iPhone 6s has a bad display at all. It is not the most highest resolution out there, but you can definitely, you know, get used to it. Now, with that being said, I really like the form factor of this phone. It is very easy to use in one hand and I am a big fan of small phones. I do not like big phones at all. If you give me an option between a small phone and a huge phone, I will any day pick a small phone even if it does not give me the same performance and battery life. So yeah, if someone out there is watching this, like some manufacturer out there is watching this, please launch more small phones. We need small form factor phones. Moving on, let's talk about the specifications that the iPhone 6s offers. So it comes with an Apple A9 chip, which is a dual core chip. Now you might be thinking dual core, what the hell? Like even a 12,000 rupee phone comes with a quad core or an eight core chip. What is this dual core? But don't worry, the performance on iPhone 6s is not that bad. It is decent enough. Although I did try to play PUBG on it, which was a very bad experience. Do not play PUBG on iPhone 6s. You won't be happy with it. But apart from that, day-to-day -day tasks are very smooth on this phone. I did not notice any lag whatsoever, even in 2020. So even if you run the latest version of apps like Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, or Zoom, or Telegram, you won't be disappointed. So when it comes to day-to-day -day normal tasks, iPhone 6s is still a good phone. Apart from that, this phone comes with 2 GB of RAM. Yes, have you heard that in 2020? 2 GB of RAM and the RAM is actually very low so you cannot keep a lot of apps in memory and that's just how it is. Now what about battery? So this phone comes with a very small 1700 milliamp hour battery. 1700 and something, not exactly 1700 but the battery life is straight up bad. You will have to charge this phone at least a couple of times a day and that is a big downside. So the battery life is very bad as compared to 2020 standards and it is not acceptable at all. So if you were expecting that it will give you good battery life, that's not the case. It's gonna die while you are using the phone in the day. So you will get a screen on time of about four hours maximum tops. Like yeah, the battery life is straight up bad. Okay, now let's talk about one of the main things and that is them cameras. Or should I say camera? 
So on the rear side, you get a single camera, which is a 12 megapixel f2.2 shooter, and it performs decent enough if you give it a lot of light. So when it comes to daylighting conditions, the camera is actually pretty good. The dynamic range is decent enough. The detail level is decent enough, and you also get pretty accurate colors. So that's one thing that Apple has been consistent with the colors on all the iPhones. Like all the iPhones shoot very good photos when it comes to the colors. But when you move towards low lighting conditions, the story is not the same. The camera struggles a lot when it comes to low lighting conditions, and that is expected. This phone is four and a half years old, and cameras like smartphone cameras have gotten better at shooting low light photos just a couple of years ago. So that is expected, and that's what happens. Now, one thing that I absolutely love on this phone is the video shooting. It can shoot 4K at 30 FPS. Yes, a four and a half year old phone still shoots 4K 30 FPS. and the video recording is not bad at all you can definitely use it to make youtube videos which is excellent the only thing missing on the iphone 6s is ois so ois was introduced in the iphone 6s series but it was exclusive to the iphone 6s plus so 6s does not have ois but i don't think that's a big problem you can definitely shoot videos with this phone at 4k 30 fps and that is excellent so it's really good to see that this phone can shoot 4k at 30 fps Now what about the front camera? The front camera is straight up bad. It is a 5 megapixel front camera, does not have a lot of detail and the selfies like I don't like the selfies from this phone at all. You can use the front camera for video calling and stuff, but apart from that, it's not good. Now what about the other things? So you will really like the fact that it has a physical fingerprint sensor and it actually works really well. So the iPhone 6s was the first to introduce second generation of Touch ID and it works really fast and is accurate as well. The iPhone 6s also is one of the last iPhones to have the headphone jack and the output from the headphone jack is also pretty good. So if you wanted a headphone jack in an iOS phone, then iPhone 6s is probably the last phone. iPhone SE was after that, but I'm going to say iPhone 6s was one of the last phones to have a headphone jack. Last iPhones. Okay, so this gets me back to the main question. Is the iPhone 6s worth it in 2020? The answer is yes, but no. Yes for people who only want an iOS device. If you strictly want an iOS device, then yes, you can definitely buy the iPhone 6s and it is still worth it. But if you are okay with some other phone, then I would suggest go with the Pixel 3a. Pixel 3a is a way better deal at a similar price point because it is more modern and the camera is just way better on the Pixel 3a, like miles better than the iPhone 6s. So that's why if you want a clean software experience from a flagship company like Apple or Google, I would any day pick the Pixel 3a over the iPhone 6s. I know a lot of people out there are going to talk about the Redmi K20 Pro and Realme X2 Pro, but there are some people who do not like Redmi and Realme phones. They do not trust these companies and they want phones from, you know, reputed companies like Apple or Google or Samsung. So for those people, I would highly recommend you to check out the Pixel 3a. Anyway that's been it this was a very quick video about the iPhone 6s in 2020 I really like making such videos and if you want to watch more such videos then please let me know about that in the comment section down below So anyway that's been it my name is Harsh Punjabi and I'll see you guys in the next one